Hey guys, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd. Recently, I got a comment from a nice person named Gloria who needed some help with Illustrator and Photoshop and making cookie cutters. I happen to have experience in Illustrator and Photoshop making cookie cutters, so I thought, hey, why don't I make a tutorial video and help her out? Go! All right, here we go. Gloria, I really hope this works out for you. I'm going to use this as my example. You don't have a profile image, so this is the next best, best thing, and this is what Google provides. Right on. In order to trace this and get the vectors out of it, I need to hit image trace up here. However, just hitting image trace doesn't seem to work. After I undo that, I click here, and I can choose one of these different ways that it traces. I'm gonna choose three color. That looks pretty good. Clicking on it and then clicking expand shows me the individual parts it found. I'm gonna go over here and take this part because we don't need it and I'm gonna get rid of it. That was easy enough. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this. I'm gonna call this original, original, original. And then I'm going to hide it. Okay, we're gonna tuck that away. Here we have layer one and Layer one is what we're going to call our base. That was easy. What we need to do is, is uh, where'd it go, where'd it go? I need to object, path, and offset the path. This gives us, there we go, a much bigger path or I'm sorry, it gives us a larger vector object to deal with. I think these are the right words. I'm sorry if they're not the right words. It gives me a larger object to deal with. And in fact, this outline is going to be where the cutter is for this cookie cutter. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm going to unite. There we go. Once I unite, I can outline. And I can get rid of the parts that I don't need anymore in this one. And there we go. So now that we have our base, we duplicate that and we call it a cutter. Don't worry, we'll make everything the right size in just a moment. Now what we need to do is take this piece here and make it our stamper. I'm gonna turn those off. I'll duplicate the layer. I'll call this, oops. I'll call this stamper, easy enough. Looks familiar. For the stamper, I will just hit the outline straight away because that's all we need. So here we've got our, our base, our cutter, and our stamper. And I hope I've done a good job of explaining how we got to each of these. Now we need to give these some, some width. The base in my cookie cutters are three millimeters wide. So once I select base, I go object. I'm sorry, I don't go object, not yet. I go up here to stroke and I change this to three millimeters. The cutter for my printer, I make 0.75 millimeters. It has to do with the nozzle size of my 3D printer and what works best for it. And I found that 0.75 millimeter seems to work well as the cutter. The stamper, I also make 0.75. Now we have a base, we have a cutter, and we have a stamper. Let's see, I have an idea. Let me make the cutter red. Okay, still can't see it, I tried. Wait, there it is, it's in red. So you can see the cutter layer exists within the base layer, and then the stamper itself exists within everything. The only issue now that we have to work out is the stamper itself isn't connected to anything. If I were to print this out, it would, it would be three shapes, and those three shapes wouldn't be connected. We need to connect these shapes together. The best way to do that is to go into our base layer and add some lines. 
Let me zoom in a little bit. That's better. So with the base layer selected, I'm going to select the line tool. And it's already centered it and I'm going to draw a line straight down so that it intersects everything. Don't worry about the size yet. For the lines, we can make those a little bit smaller. We can make them one millimeter. We can make it, let's make it two millimeter for our purposes though. When I click stroke, I need to change the type of caps it has. We don't want that. There we go, we want that. Now we see this path within the base. So if we turn off the stamper and the cutter, on the printer itself, it will print these at base layers. That's exactly what we want. Now, clicking stamper shows us the stamper and clicking cutter shows us the cutter. The reason we have to separate it like this is because once it's brought into Photoshop, we assign height values to all of these different uh, paths that we're bringing in. So if this path here, if the line we drew for the stamper layer exists in the stamper layer itself, it wouldn't look right. And hopefully that makes sense once we get to Photoshop. If we're satisfied with the way that everything is designed, we need to expand everything along the stroke width. So I'll first go to the cutter, 0.75 stroke width. I can go object expand, uncheck fill, stroke is checked, and I hit okay, and it becomes that object. I do the same thing for stamper. Let's see, where's the stamper at? There it is. Stamper is checked. I go, and it's 0.75 millimeters. I'm gonna go object, expand, Uncheck fill, stroke is checked, and I hit OK. Last but not least, we go to base. I'm going to go object, expand, uncheck fill, stroke is checked, and I'm going to hit OK. All right, we have our, we have our objects set up. We've got our base layer, we have our stamper, and we have our cutter. All have been expanded along the stroke width, and we're ready to bring these into Photoshop. Thankfully, I have Photoshop right here. All right, within Photoshop, I'm gonna go File, New. I can call it, these settings are fine. I'm gonna hit OK. Within Layers, I can see here, I'm gonna call this one Base. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna call this Cutter. Last but not least, I'm gonna create a third layer and call it Stamper. These will correlate to the different layers within Illustrator. First off, we go to the base layer, we make sure it's checked, and we hit Command-C in Mac, or Control-C in Windows. Over to Photoshop, I go to the base layer and hit Command or Control-V to paste it in. I'm gonna select Path, hit OK. I'm gonna go to the 3D tab, and I'm gonna check 3D Extrusion, and the source is going to be a work path, and I'm going to hit Create. And there's our base layer. We need to go here to extrusion depth. And what we'd make this is 1.75 millimeters tall. Over on layers, I'm going to select cutter. I'm going to go to illustrator. And I'm going to select cutter here. And I'm going to copy back into Photoshop. I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste as a path. And then I'm going to go 3D. 3D extrusion of a work path and hit create. Last but not least, on layers, I'm going to select stamper. In illustrator, I'm going to select stamper. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I'm going to hit paste as a path. I'm going to go to the 3D tab. My source is a work path and I have 3D extrusion selected. And there it is. Our three objects are now are now our three three our three three D objects. Boy, say that fast. Are are now layers. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go to three D merge three D layers, and now they all become three D objects within this one layer. What I need to do is rotate these. So I'm going to select all three, the properties tab and I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees. 
oh, you know what? I forgot something. I guess that happens. The base, the cutter, we need to make 12.25 millimeters and the stamper itself is nine millimeters. Thankfully, we can go back and edit these things. Everything is rotated. I'm going to select the three objects and I'm sorry, I'm gonna select scene and then select each of the individual objects and within properties, I'm going to, I'm going to click on move to ground. Let's rotate around our object. When you have scene selected, this tool rotates around the entire object. I can zoom in. So as you can see, here's our cookie cutter. Look at that. We have the base layer right here, and it exists a little bit outside of everything. We have the cutter layer that's taller than the stamper layer. And here's the stamper. And you can tell right here, right here is the connector piece that is within the base layer. So it's 1.75 millimeters tall, but it connects the stamper layer. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that, hopefully that works out. This is a pretty tiny little object, so it shouldn't take too long to print. From here to print this, I'm going to select the printer. I'm going to print a local. It's going to be going to an STL file because it, I don't have any of these printers here. Printer units is in millimeters and my detail level is high. I hit this button and it's now progressing along. Here's our progress meter. All we need to do now is export it. After I hit export, I have it in the area I want. I'm going to call it Gloria Cookie Cutter. Dot STL. There we go. That's it. Now we need to bring it into our slicing program to print it out. I'm using Simplify 3D version 3.0 to do my slicing. Here's the cookie cutter we just made. That looks good. I've got my process already set up, so I'm going to hit prepare to print. It shouldn't take too long. And there it is. The different colors show us how exactly this is going to be printed out. It says it'll take 14 minutes and that's an estimate. Now we just need to save this out to the SD card, put it in the printer and hit print. All right, it's off the printer and it seems to have printed really well. Here it is, look at that. It's a two piece cookie cutter. I printed it really small so it wouldn't take very long. This print only took 20 minutes. Here's the stamper part. Here's the cutter part. The stamper is not as tall as the cutter. The base looks good. You can stamp and then cut. Everything fits together. There it is. I'm gonna find a place to host the files and let you have them for free. That includes the Photoshop file, the Illustrator file, and the STL file that Photoshop generates. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Hopefully this helps you out, Gloria. I hope you get everything you need from this video. If not, just let me know. We'll take care of it. And again, high five.